Okay, let's run through cutting out an image with the lasso tool. So if we grab the lasso tool from our toolbar on the left-hand side here, you can see our options uh, change at the top here. We have a few different things that we can we can adjust, and most of the time we'll be making these adjustments using shortcuts rather than by changing the, the settings here. So the first option here will let us make a selection. The second option here will make us add to a selection, but we can use the shift shortcut key to do that. The third option will allow us to remove from a selection, but we'll use the Alt or Option key on the keyboard um, to make that. We're going to leave the feathering off uh, for the moment. We're going to have a nice sharp edge. And we're just going to have a look at how we can begin to draw around this pumpkin with the, the lasso tool. So I'm using a pen tablet here, which makes it a lot easier. If you're using the trackpad on a laptop to do this, it becomes very hard depending on the size of it. If you're using a mouse, um, it's also a bit tricky. So the pen tablet is definitely the the best tool to, to work with on this. So if we uh, zoom in first of all, so I'm using Command and Plus or Control and Plus on the PC uh, to zoom in. You can also use the, the zoom tool. I'm going to come right in and just uh, remind you a few shortcuts. So I'm holding down space here to move the canvas around as I'm making my selection. So I'm kind of zooming in um, so that it's quick for me to draw around the object but with some of the, the detail of the edge. Okay, so if we just start down here, we'll just draw roughly, and we're drawing quite loosely around the edge of our pumpkin here, and we'll show how we can fix some of those mistakes a little later on. And then when we get to the edge of our canvas here, if we hold down the space bar, you'll see that you jump to the hand tool, and we can quickly then jump our selection, or what we see across to the left, so we can keep drawing from that point. Okay. If we do come to the edge of the canvas and kind of keep going, the canvas will just stop there. So we do need to use that spacebar shortcut to then track up and make our selection. Okay. So we'll just keep moving around here, grabbing our selection. I'm going to leave a few deliberate mistakes here just so we can fix those a little bit later on. Okay, let's come around this quite quickly. Now there are much better selection tools in Photoshop, but the lasso tool definitely has its uses. And we're working quite quickly here, but actually if we slow down to make the selection, we'll get a much better selection. So now once we're back to the beginning, if we let go, we'll have our selection and you'll see the marching ants around the edge of the the pumpkin that we have here and this is the same for every selection so basically we have the marching ants around the selection now one thing to look out for is if you have marching ants around the edge of your select of your canvas and marching ants around the middle it normally means that something like the background is selected rather than the object that you selected um, and that can happen sometimes when you're making a color selection so let's zoom in here and we're going to come across particularly to uh, these areas here so um, basically these couple of bits where we've made some mistakes we want to add to the selection here, okay? And we want to remove the, from the selection there. So I'm just going to go up and change my option back to the new selection. And then when I'm here, you'll see I've got the lasso tool when I'm on the outside. If I click once, it will take away the selection that I already have and I need to start from scratch. But if I hold down shift, you'll see a little plus symbol pop up next to my lasso tool. And the trick here is not to try and draw super close um, to where your selection is, but to, to start inside your selection and then come to the point where you want to meet it. So we're coming from way inside our selection and then drawing around. And the reason for doing that, I'll just run through it again, is so that if we make any mistakes or we're slightly wobbly at the beginning, it won't matter. We're just adding to that selection and it's only this line that we made at the last moment that counts. So we kind of give ourselves a bit of time to, to run into it. Um, if we hold down the Option key on the keyboard, then we can remove from this selection, okay? And we could keep going around and zoom right in with the lasso tool and keep kind of correcting this, okay? And you can see that the lasso tool does give you that nice kind of fluid control where some of the other more automatic tools won't give you that kind of clear control over what you're trying to select. Okay, so we can keep coming around and adjusting our selection and just fine tuning it and fixing these edges, okay?
Okay, so we've made a, a rough selection of our pumpkin here. Now there are two ways that we can knock the background out here. One is uh, to make a straight copy. So if we go to Edit and Copy, or Command or Control and C, then we make a copy of our selection, and then we can go to Edit and Paste. And if we jump to the Layers panel, we'll see what's happened here. We've got a brand new layer, and if we take away the background layer, then we've got a selection of our pumpkin, and we can see we've made a few mistakes along the edge here. Now, where we see um, this checkerboard around the back here, if we look at the thumbnail on our layers panel, we can see that actually there's a checkerboard there. So all we have is the pixels um, that we've selected and copied and pasted, okay? We don't have any of that original um, image in this pasted layer, okay? Which is not the best way to actually create a new layer from a selection if you wanna have transparency. So let's take a couple of um, steps back. So we'll jump to our history panel here, okay? And if you don't see your history panel, just go to window and history and you'll be able to bring it up. And we'll just jump back to where we see the last lasso option. Okay, so I'm just selecting that there. We'll close up the history panel. And now what we're gonna do, if we look in our layers, we're just back to having the one background layer. Um, we're gonna turn off the background option for this layer. So if we double click here, Okay, we'll call this pumpkin. Okay, and then once we turn that background layer off, you'll see the lock disappear on the right hand side there. We can now use a mask layer to actually make the transparency. So if we come down to the bottom of our layers panel here and click once, we'll actually mask out that background. So what this means is that instead of removing those pixels, we're just using a black and white mask to create that transparency. If you hold down shift and click on the mask layer, it will turn it on and off. So you can see those pixels are still there. We can toggle between the mask on and the mask off. Now, as we come to explore this a bit more, you'll see that this is a really nice way that we can actually add and remove um, from our selection. But the key point here is that we haven't lost any pixels, okay? And we can work with this mask layer in particular with something like a black or white paintbrush to paint in areas of the image where we've made a mistake. So we'll just give one example of this quickly. So we're moving away from the lasso tool now and grabbing our paintbrush. And then if we jump to the black and white um, default foreground and background color here and just switch this to black. So black is basically painting out part of the image, okay? We'll just select a soft round brush and we'll come in here and we'll be able to paint on the mask layer and actually and paint out some of that edge, okay? And you can see as we flip between black and white, we can paint back in the original layer or we can remove it, okay? I'm using quite a hard edge brush here. But you can see the point is, is that we can recover some of that original image. We haven't lost any information there. Okay, that's a quick intro to the lasso tool and then also talking about how we can improve the way we work with transparency and within Photoshop.